Today we'll be taking a look at the 22 watt Creality Falcon 2 laser engraver, along with setting up the machine with an enclosure, general laser safety, and seeing the results it can produce. The Falcon 2 almost comes completely assembled in the box. The pre-assembled metal frame means there are only a few steps needed to set up the machine. Four metal legs with rubber pads are screwed onto the bottom corners of the laser frame. Next is the metal laser module that slides into the carriage and this is held in place with two thumb screws. The module is a 22 watt class 4 diode laser. This works by using four individual 6 watt laser diodes inside and focusing them into a single beam. The compact module produces a laser spot size of 0.1 millimeters. A separate air assist pump is included and this helps with removing smoke from the surface, protecting the lens and producing cleaner results when cutting. The air pump can be placed next to the laser and a single cable plugs into the side of the frame for control and to receive the power. Just above the plug is a dial for manually adjusting the airflow. A low setting is used for engraving and a higher setting is used for cutting. Most of the cables and air hoses are already neatly managed into the frame, so we just need to plug in the laser module and connect the air hoses and then give the machine a quick check over. The included micro SD card provides a setup guide with full details on the assembly, user manual, sample files and the software information. A recommended accessory is the metal sheet base and the honeycomb platform. These are for protecting the workbench and allowing smoke and fumes to quickly exit when cutting the material. This one is sized at 300 by 300 millimeters, but it's recommended to get a larger one to cover the entire 400 by 415 millimeter work area. At the front of the frame, we can find the simple control panel for homing, framing and starting a job. The control panel is mainly used when working from the SD card without having a computer connected. The machine can be operated either via a file on the SD card or connected to a PC via the USB port and operated within the software. On the side we can also find the power socket and the on and off power switch. Just above the front panel is a key to lock out the machine from unauthorised use and an emergency stop button. The machine's solid and well-built frame has safety precautions built in. We have limit switches on the axis and an alert buzzer and active stop if the machine is tilted, flipped or dropped. The laser module also has a protective glass filter cover and a triple monitoring system for airflow, flame detection and lens monitoring. The airflow is monitored and will detect if the air is on or off. The flame monitoring detects if there is a flame and will alarm and stop the machine immediately. Lens monitoring will trigger an alarm when the lens is dirty and needs cleaning, which helps avoid lens breakage. Using an enclosure with an open frame laser is absolutely essential. Creality offers a protective cover that sits over the laser engraver with a fume extraction fan to remove the smoke and fumes. The assembly of the protective cover kit is fairly easy and completed by connecting the numbered rods with the corner braces. Then attaching the cover to the rods with the velcro straps. Two ports towards the back of the cover allow the exhaust fan and tube to be installed on either side. This is then ducted and vented to the outdoors to remove the smoke and fumes. The protective cover sits over the frame and on the two sides towards the front there are two ports for the cables to pass through and there is a small pocket on the side for placing tools. The tinted orange window has a large zippered opening allowing access to the machine when the cover is on. While the enclosure helps isolate smoke and extract fumes and add some basic protection to the user, it's quite difficult to press the emergency stop button with the cover closed. In case of an emergency, you'd want to immediately stop the machine without opening the cover. Also access to the front control panel, SD card, side power switch and manual airflow adjustment are limited with the cover closed. But these are less of a concern if using the machine connected to a computer over USB with the software. To add a level of safety and monitoring, it's a good idea to install your own camera. This small webcam is bolted onto the frame with a custom bracket, then plugged into a PC. With the camera, we can minimise looking at the machine while it's in use, and the laser machine can be viewed and controlled via the software in the computer. Even with an enclosure and webcam connected, always wear the correct certified laser eyewear when operating the machine. The kit does come with a pair of green tinted safety glasses with an unknown rating so it's hard to know what protection they're offering. It's best practice to check the machine's laser wavelength and then select the suitable laser glasses for the required protection. For this particular machine, the laser's wavelength is 455 nanometers. 
The correct laser safety glasses will have the wavelength protection range rating, the optical density, and these will also be certified as laser safe. So don't take any risks with your eyes and always check and wear the correct laser safety glasses when using a laser machine. As the machine focuses a high-powered laser beam to quickly heat and burn away material, there is a risk of fire. The machine does have a flame detection alarm built in, and hopefully not needed, but still keep a fire extinguisher nearby and never leave the machine running unattended. The laser engraver can work with a variety of materials such as paper, wood, anodized aluminium and stainless steel. But take note, some materials and binding agents found in materials are highly toxic and give off harmful fumes when engraved or cut on a laser. Always research and check the material's properties before using it with a laser machine. The machine can be operated by the SD card or via USB-C port with the computer. For the SD card, it will only read the last G-code file saved on the card. This file can be cut and engraved as many times as needed from the machine. But if you want to change designs or settings, the card needs to be removed and a new G-code file needs to be saved on the card. For beginning the first test, Creality provides two sample files on the SD card that have already been prepared as G-code. These files are a good starting point to test the machine. With the machine off and your safety glasses on, the material, a 2mm plywood board, is placed onto the laser's honeycomb platform. There is a handy multi-level focus block included for setting up the laser focus. This tool has three levels to set the height and laser focus for engraving and cutting, all depending on the material thickness. For this sample, we'll be using the engrave and cutting thickness setting for 2mm material. To adjust the laser, two thumb wheels holding the laser module are loosened. The focus block tool is placed on top of the material and under the edge of the laser module. With the height set, the two thumb wheels are re-tightened, then the focus block is removed. With the material set up and the focus set, next is to turn the machine on and frame the piece of material. The first file is the Creality logo which is engraved and then cut out around the edges. This process took around 20 minutes to complete. Once the machine is finished, wait until the smoke clears, turn off the laser and then open the enclosure. This is a nice first test completed to confirm the machine is working correctly and the engraved and cut out result is nice and clean. The next test is the included eagle file and this file is only cut out without any engraving. This was a lot faster and took around 3 minutes to complete. It's quite impressive to see the accuracy and detail the machine can produce. While the files can be cut and engraved from the SD card, it's far easier to connect the machine directly to a computer to control and monitor. This makes it easy to change settings, adjust designs and to start and stop the machine. In most cases, using the USB connection will be the preferred method to operate the machine. For the software, Creality recommends either Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. Lightburn is the preferred choice. It's easy to use and works really well with the machine, but it's only a 30-day free trial. Making test engravings and cuts is normally the best way to check the material and see what speeds and power settings are needed. Luckily, Creality provides a handy quick start guide with recommended speeds and power settings for a range of materials, and these make a good starting point. The imported Porsche logo is a PNG file, and in the software this is set to engrave at 6,000 millimeters per minute at 30% power with the air off. Once the engraving is complete, this is set to cut around the edges at 700 millimeters per minute at 100% power with the air assist on. It's always good to check the project with a preview before sending it to the machine. This logo took around 20 minutes to complete, with most of the time spent on the engraving. The final project result is excellent, a perfectly engraved logo and cleanly cut out around the edges. A piece of stainless steel is the next material to test on the machine. While it won't cut through this, we can engrave and produce different colours. By using a simple test pattern with variations in speed and power, we can find the best settings. The speed range for this test is set from 300mm per minute 
to 4,000 millimetres per minute, and the power range is set from 10% to 100%. This test is a great way to explore what the laser can achieve on metal, and it's a unique way to see what it can do with stainless steel. The final result shows a range of colours and it becomes more deeply etched on the slower and higher power settings. A piece of standard printer paper is the next material to test on the laser. The settings for this are 3,500mm per minute at 80% power. Being thin, we thought it would just move around and burn. Amazingly, the laser managed to cut out the standard piece of printer paper without any issues. It's interesting to see how effortlessly it can cut out so much detail and the results were way better than expected. The final test was cutting a thicker piece of wood after a few quick tests to determine the speed and power. The 12mm pine wood is set up to cut with one pass at 120mm per minute at 100% power. Cutting out the pieces of wood took around 8 minutes to complete. The pieces were removed easily from the wood Although the edges were a little bit dark, but these can be cleaned up and lightly sanded. One of the optional accessories for the Falcon 2 is the rotary attachment. This accessory allows you to engrave on round objects such as bottles, glasses or stainless steel drink containers. Overall the Falcon 2 has an excellent build quality and the laser is quick to set up and easy to use. Adding an enclosure is an essential part for removing smoke and for basic protection. Also make sure to use a pair of certified laser safety glasses and it's highly recommended to install a webcam for monitoring. The 22 watt laser module and large working area make it a versatile tool that can be used for cutting, marking and engraving a variety of materials.